I tell you, farmer just in your blood. If you grow up doing it, it gets in your blood. Definitely a great life, and I enjoy it. And wish I wasn't so old, I could do it forever. Right now, we're on the land of Hamilton Creek Farms. The whole farm is almost 400 acres. It's 300 tillable. This year, I'm all growing all soybeans. I favor soybeans. I have real good luck with them. Maryland is a great place to be a farmer. We get good prices for our crops here because of the chicken industry is right here. Uh, great support to, from the agricultural community. I really enjoy being here. I first saw and went boating on the Chesapeake Bay when I was seven or eight years old with my family on a little sailboat my dad bought. And I'll never forget going out off out of Annapolis, Severn River into the Chesapeake, sailing on the weekends. And, and sometimes you see these huge spots of just dead fish. And I often wonder and ask my dad what killed all those fish. And he, he couldn't give me a real good answer on that. Chesapeake Bay is, is an impaired water body. In the summer, it undergoes anoxia. There are areas of the bay in which the oxygen levels go down extremely low. And uh, aquatic life in the Chesapeake Bay can suffer because of that. There are nutrients that if they make it to the bay, they will cause algal blooms, which is really detrimental to the conditions in the bay. Um, so we try to limit the excess of those nutrients since they trigger those events. The US EPA has placed a TMDL, a total maximum daily load upon the bay. This requires jurisdictions around the bay to reduce inputs of sediment of nitrogen and phosphorus to the bay. The majority of your nitrogen and phosphoruses and sediments come from off of agricultural land. Farmers could and should be doing more to help control that. I think there's a little bit of distrust between the farmers and the government there. We have to farm, we have to develop, uh, we have to have this infrastructure, but can we do it in a way that is environmentally safe, compatible, in the best way possible? Over time, I started to realize I had a serious issue coming from the farms that were farther a mile or so uphill from me, higher elevations. When we had big rain events, the stormwater was moving down through my property into Hamilton Creek, and I saw that there was a, a lot of uh, sediments in this flowing water. So I went ahead and developed my own environmental program. I call it a cascading system. The cascading stormwater system is basically four ponds that are set up in series. When it rains, a lot of runoff will come into these ponds. So now when it rains and stormwater comes in, it flows into the first pond, it fills up. Once it becomes full, it kind of overflows through some large grass and goes into the second and that follows into the third, into the fourth, and if there's enough rainfall and runoff, then it will overflow from the fourth cascading system into his pond, which goes into Hamilton Creek. Hamilton Creek flows into the bay, so that's kind of the connection that was there. And then, just with my own experience in engineering, what engineering I know, I just basically did all the engineering myself. Uh, it's tried to minimize the impact on farming and maximize the impact on uh, the, the pollution movement. So about five to six years ago, Sam Owings, who owns High Impact Environmental, approached the Maryland Industrial Partnership and was looking to test this facility that he had constructed on his own farm and get it analyzed, third-party evaluation, to see if it was having volume control of stormwater and also what pollutants it could reduce. 
So the Maryland Industrial Partnership knew of Dr. Davis and his lab and partnered with them and connected the two so that Sam Owens and Dr. Davis were able to come together. Since it had a Chesapeake Bay restoration focus, it's one that they send the DNR for our review. It reviewed very technically well on our side, it reviewed well on the business side, so we moved forward with an investment. He wanted the proof that this worked, and that's where I think I was able to help him. We put in some flumes, some weirs, some automatic monitoring equipment, a rain gauge, so that when it uh, rained and the stormwater started coming into his cascading ponding system, we were able to get water samples, get them back into the lab, get them analyzed, and we could see the impact of the cascading system. Beautiful. I think the, after two years, I think we've got some really good data and it shows some reductions of nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediments uh, from leaving the farm and entering state waters in the Chesapeake Bay. We found that the phosphorus removal overall was about 59%, the nitrogen removal was about 64%. That is the total load reduction of these two nutrients over the entire uh, monitoring period that we looked at at the cascading system. When we saw the results, we were really excited. Uh, looking, getting numbers around 60% removal, even for storm, you know, in the storm events and, and normalizing that as Dr. Davis and, and Rosie did, is very exciting. It's, it's a very good number when you look at some of our other range of practices that we have. So in order to implement SAM's agricultural cascading system, you do have to take some land out of production, which is a hard thing to do when you have to you use that land to make money. Um, so there is a little bit of an apprehension, rightfully so, about taking some of their usable land out of production. For farmers, the incentives have to override some of the real issues that some of the farmers are dealing with in uh, trying to get crops in their lands and, and make a profit from their land. A lot of these incentives want them to take land out of production, put in cover crops or put in buffer strips, and that's taking money away from the farmers. That's taking maybe food away from their table. I felt like that if farmers can get their pollution levels down to a more su sustainable level, it's going to be better for the farming industry all the way down the line. You look at this compared to other agricultural stormwater control measures, uh, it, to me it's a tool in the toolbox and that's the way I look at all of our stormwater management systems that it gives the farmer, gives the agricultural user an option. The programs I've developed, I think they're going to have such a high positive impact on the Chesapeake Bay that it, I think we're going to start to see better grades if we can get this technology out into the hands of people that would want to use it. I feel like we're having an impact. I was able to, to meet Sam, to see what Sam is doing, to work with Sam, to give Sam the credibility that he needs with this project uh, to show that he is demonstrating a benefit to the Chesapeake Bay. I've got this vision that they're going to be everywhere at some point and it's going to really improve the life and health of the people in this country and everywhere.